G'day. In a previous episode I made the drawers up for overhauling this cabinet. It's now the cabinet's uh, time. I've taken the vise off, I've emptied it out, I've now got to uh, disassemble and, uh, and, and do a bit of cutting and shutting. I was asked why are you doing this and not um, building something from scratch. Well apart from a couple of hundred dollars worth of steel uh, it was also one of those things that okay I've done all that what do I do with this I've got no use for it so uh, I thought okay we'll recycle and, re and reuse a bit. Like a number of the bits of the stuff I've got in my workshop this one's had a few changes over the time. That section there was an add-on there used to be a drill press that sat on there and then when I got a, a, a floor standing drill I just put a uh, a drawer in there. The vise has been here for well since that was done. The vise used to sit I think on a on a three-legged stand that I'd made up. Um, I also keep my clamp set there and, and oil lubricants that sort of stuff which I use you know reasonably um, often. Sitting above here is a is a cupboard which has got files in it that's going to have to be moved over and the last thing I want to do with this is actually put a hoist on it so that I can lift heavy things from here up to the table of the mill without having to, to strain my back. Um, it's been a long time uh, aim of mine and uh, now it might actually finally happen. A bit of industrial archaeology going on here. Just a couple of um, uh, things that I've discovered or rediscovered since uh, taking this apart. Firstly the the hinges were weld onto the doors but I actually screwed them in place here with some nylock nuts so um, you don't always have to have screw and screw you can weld and screw that's that's all fine you can see here where this portion was added on and I've got a couple of bits of angle in there for that have acted as runners for the drawers including a piece here because the drawer looks like the drawer was trying to flip up so uh, there we go. The other holes for the vise as it was, but there's another three holes over here. So I think what happened was that I had this, the vise mounted on the corner here with the drill press over here. I've cut a piece out of here so I can get larger things in the top there. The other thing is that I haven't got perfectly joined corners here. I've, cut, I've actually cut the, the um, angle short so I don't have to worry about the radius on the inside of the corner. The other thing to note too is that the side panels were just thin sheet steel held on with some rivets. I probably could have done it with a few more rivets just to keep them flat but if you're wanting a nice sturdy um, you know bench or something like that and, and that's you know this was for, for the vise and it will be again so that's you know I want it to stay sturdy but uh, if you just need to cover the sides that's not a bad trick to remember as well just uh, pop rivets every every so often uh, cross cross crease the the sheet if you can another feature worth noting is this the stand was made with four legs but this one I cut a little bit short and then I put a, a block in there with a with a bolt just a, a coach head bolt nothing special and a nut to lock it and that's that's tapped but what that meant was because the, the shed the floor in the shed is a little bit uneven in places I could sort of have it set up on the three legs and then adjust this one to get it nice and solid so that's another feature that I'll, I'll be um, incorporating this is most pretty much all of my salvage material there is another couple of pieces down there but I'm not going to bother with those at the moment unless I get really desperate um, a couple of things with this one is that I'm going to have to add some short pieces like in here or uh, on the end of these now the temptation is to say I need to add 30 millimeters so I'll cut a piece 30 millimeters long what you're better off doing is actually having a piece that's over long welding that on then cutting that down to the size you want and the reason for that is if you have a short piece not only do you have problems holding it in the right spot but you also have problems with the where the heat's going and so if you have a longer piece it's it's a little bit easier to get a, a decent joint out of it for the holding and for the for the heat transfer and then you then you cut it off the other thing that I'm going to be doing here is cutting this frame I need to stretch it that way and that way now this is almost right for width I need to add another 30 millimeters this is way short but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it round and use this uh, to take this up to 480 and to take this out to 6, uh, 660, uh, 6, 626 I think it is um, for 
that reason that I'm going to be able to then put a decent bit of material, sized bit of material in there, weld that on, and uh, go from there. Now, I'm I'm going to spread it in one direction this way, but not the other direction just yet, because what I want to do is get my sides all done, have my slides all mounted up so I can put drawers in or a spacer that looks like a drawer, uh, and then make sure that I've got the width just right. I'm starting by extending the top, and the way I've done that is I've, I've cut it so I'm in the middle, I've marked both ends so I know which, which sides match, and then I've got a piece of material to go in the middle there. In this case it's uh, it's 220 long and that, that gives me the, the length I need. Uh, I'm using a, just a, another piece of angle just as a straight back so I'm tacking and then there's another tack on the inside after I've checked that it's flat that way uh, and that's just so that I don't find that if I if I blast it away I could find that I've got everything trying to, to, to suck up. So uh, tacking to, to get it in the right position once I'm happy with that I'll then weld uh, fully around there. This material is 5mm thick so rule of thumb is anything over 3 millimeters, you're not going to get full penetration with it. So what I've done is I've put a bit of a bevel on here and I won't get full penetration with that but when I when I weld that'll give me a bit better because that's going to be dressed flush as well. When cutting pieces of material for jobs like this um, rather than cut you know one of my longer pieces and I may need a longer piece later the, the rule I use is I, I find the shortest piece that will give me the pieces I want. Now I may have to juggle that a bit. If I need three pieces and I, I can get three out of a slightly longer piece and two and a half out of a, a shorter piece then I go for the, 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 uh, the longer piece. But the idea is to use your, your material as efficiently as you can. So these were just a smidge longer. I've cut them to size, put the bevel on both sides uh, and that's all ready to, uh, to fully weld. Bit of a progress shot. Uh, this is around about the size that it's going to end up being, so it's a little bit taller, a little bit wider, a little bit deeper. But you can see the basic strategy here. I've got bits of angle in here uh, and they're going to have the draw slides in them. Once I've got those set up I can work out with some degree of accuracy what the, the length in here needs to be and what the length back here needs to be. Uh, and also, you know, across the front uh, down the bottom there and across the, the back and um, you know that's that's pretty much it. A bit of a progress report so I've got it uh, all welded together um, and threw a bit of paint on the outside. I'm not so concerned about the inside it's more the outside uh, where it's going to get moisture, moist air coming up against it and that might start rust happening. I remember just in time to put a couple of pads there to uh, put the vise onto so what's going to happen now? Well I need to have put, um, I've got some 12mm plywood just back there uh, so I'm going to be putting a top on that and then putting some thinner sheet metal over the top putting the vise back on. The drawers here need fronts on them uh, and, and handles of course and then on the sides I've, I've put in some sheet metal cladding uh, and the idea behind that is, is well firstly keep dust and, and that sort of thing out but secondly uh, I'd like the space in here even if the temperature fluctuates uh, outside a bit and the humidity fluctuates a little bit I'd like the temperature to stay in here to stay um, I won't say stable but, but not be subject to those fluctuations um, because that's when you get con condensation rust coming in. All the, the drawers go in and out uh, and that's nice. The uh, setting up the, the sides and then and then putting these pieces in uh, was uh, rather interesting because I had to put um, bits of angle across the top there, clamp them in around about the right spot, square everything up, try a drawer and, and go from there. It actually worked out to be what I calculated. You may recall when I folded up these drawers I put this funny little flange there and you can probably see a little bit better what it was for. The slide is just underneath there and so what I'm hoping is that any dirt, grit, whatever that falls down hits that and goes into the drawer rather than gets caught up in the slide. They're rather sensitive to uh, that sort of thing and so best to, to try and keep them clean if you can. I did actually order a second, uh, sorry, a spare set of slides, uh, quite by accident, but I'm glad I did because I used one of them to uh, to mark out, and now it's it's feeling a little bit on the gritty side. So I'll be able to clean that out, I think. As you can see, I'm able to slide drawers out and get direct access to to things uh, without having to to root around the back of a cupboard. 
In terms of physical size, it's only about an inch bigger that way and an inch bigger this way, so 25 millimeters or so. Um, that's all it needs to be. Height-wise, it's 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 probably uh, inch and a quarter, uh, 32 millimeters, but uh, nothing too insignificant. And in fact, when I when I checked what this is doing, and I checked uh, you know my height and, and and that sort of thing, I thought it'd be nice if it was a bit taller. This is the end result. Uh, five drawers. They're rolling in and out quite nicely. The only problem is that they need to be about twice as big, but there we go. Uh, I've got most of the stuff in here I wanted to get in, but there's a couple of things missing. Point to note on the drawer fronts here is that I've put a, a 45 degree slope back, and, and the hope is that when a, uh, a chip from the mill here hits that, it goes on the floor and not into the drawer. But apart from that, everything works. This drawer here has got so much stuff in it that uh, when it's about halfway out, the bottom is dragging on this lip, which is a bit unfortunate, but um, that's sometimes the way it is. These bottom ones here, that one there for the ro rotary table, for example, I can get straight down to that with a hoist, pick that up and put that over here. So uh, I'm pleased with that idea. So there it is, some revised storage for the mill. Thanks for watching, see you for the next one.